Welcome back to Paul's Railroad, everybody. Well, today I've kind of gone off the rails just a little bit. A little loco, if you will. Why? Well, I designed this little N-scale rural freight house. Not once, no, I designed it twice. Why? I did it for you guys. I wanted to show you what can be done with today's tools that we have at our disposal. A uh, relatively inexpensive FDM 3D printer and a relatively inexpensive laser engraver. I use it as a cutter as well. All right, folks, laying here in front of us is the kit that I designed twice. <laughs> but anyways, the one to the left here, I designed in a 3D modeling program, and I printed this out on a FDM 3D printer. To the right here, I designed this again in a 3D modeling program, but I designed it as a 2D model, and I cut this out using my little hobby-grade laser engraver. Now, the reason for doing this is I wanted to create the same kind of model using two different machines that are readily available to us as hobbyists and I want to put them together to show you what each of them looks like using the different types of technology that we have and you can decide for yourself which one you're going to like better. Now we're going to start with the FDM printed model structure first. We're going to get it put together then we'll get this one put together. This may be two videos guys. This might be a long video. So let's get to it. Okay. In order to keep this video as short as possible, I time lapse the entire build and finish of this uh, 3D printed structure model I created. Guys, I have lots of videos on my channel where I go into great detail showing you how to paint and whether a 3D printed model structure for your railroad. As a matter of fact, I will link some of those videos at the end of this video if you'd like to go check those out. But basically guys, I just start out with my airbrush and I put a base coat down on everything. And I try to start from the lightest color work my way up to the darkest color that I'm going to use. That way, changing the colors in the airbrush is much quicker and easier. I don't have to tear the airbrush all the way down. I can just rinse it out, spray out the old stuff, put the new darker color in, and I'm usually pretty good to go. Once my base coats are down, guys, I come back with the paintbrush. And as you can see here, I paint one board at a time with that red paint. I load up the paintbrush, I start across the board, and when the paint starts to run out, I just keep going. Why? Because it leaves empty spots on the model where the under color shows through and that gives you the weathered look on a 3D printed model. Once I'm finished doing that, I paint the trim with an off-white color. I only use one coat of off-white paint. Again, it does not cover completely that way and it gives me a aged look. Once it's finished with that, it's just the doors, you know, just rinse and repeat. You don't want to go too heavy on your paints if you want that aged look. After that is finished, folks, then we go through and we are going to touch up other areas like the railings I'll coming up here in a second. I had where I had alligator clips attached to the railings when I was painting them with the airbrush. I had to come back through with the paintbrush and touch up those spots too. Not a big deal. Super quick and easy. Once all that is finished, it is time to start weathering the roof. I start with a dry brush. I use darker grays, medium grays, light grays, and even a little bit of red to bring out the colors, to bring out the textures, I should say, in this roof. And I must say, I'm very happy with how this roof came out. It's pretty impressive for an FDM printer. With that being said, guys, if you have an FDM printer and you'd like to print this model, head over to Cults 3D. I will put a link in the description below. I have a page on Cults 3D where you can get a, this model for yourself to 3D print. Yes, I do charge a little bit of money. That's how I keep this channel going it's not much as a matter of fact the base that i created for this model there are two bases in fact the one i printed here for this video is sized to line up with bachman easy track that has the attached road bed the other base is a shorter base that will line up with your regular standard track that way your box cars line up with the dock area perfectly once all of that is done as far as the roof goes with the weathering or the dry brushing i should say I come back to this uh, rock wall base and I use a sponge. I start sponging on multiple colors, multiple shades of browns and reds and oranges to give it that well, real rock look. After I have all of that done, I go and I'm going to attach the dock to this base. The reason I'm doing that is I wanted to give this base some structure so it doesn't become too flexible for our next procedure. Once that dock is attached, I mask off the dock and I hit the entire base area with a clear matte finish. I'm doing this to protect the paint for our next step. The next step is using a joint compound to fill in the cracks between the rocks to give it that mortar look. 
Now, again, I used the clear matte finish to protect the paint because this joint compound is a little bit wet. And plus, I will come up with a damp towel afterward to wipe off the excess joint compound. If I did not protect that paint, it would wash it away or make it all muddy looking. Once all that is finished, I come through and I do a general black wash, very super thinned out black paint over the entire model, bringing it all together as one cohesive unit, as you can see here with the structure. And I will also hit the side of the rocks here because that joint compound, that mortar is super bright white and we're modeling an old structure, so I needed to tone it down. I used the wash to do that as well. Once we have all of that finished, now it's time to start assembling and doing some other, well, I should say dry brushing, but it's actual, we're gonna be getting into using some powders. But the first thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna glue on the railings here, as you can see. Then I'm gonna come back in, and I have some uh, acetate that I cut out to glue in for the two windows and the side door that had window openings. Right here, as you can see, I'm gluing in the acetate right now. Once I have all of that finished, I glue the roof on and I start weathering the roof and the building with my chalks. As you can see, I'm just using the same similar colors again in the chalks that I used with the dry brushing procedure. It gives it just a little bit more depth, a little more, you know, worn in, dirty look, which is, I like an old dirty building. <laughs> I don't know about you. It looks more realistic to me than a brand spanking new one. And these are just cheap old chalks. You can pick these up anywhere. The ones that were in the little container there, I just ground them up. Now here I'm gluing the building onto the structure base. Then this kit is officially finished. So I'm gonna shut up right here and I'll let you guys finish watching with my little bit of weathering compounds I got going on. Then we'll get on to the finished reveal. Oh, and by the way, subscribe guys if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up. Take care and happy railroading everybody.